So far, we've talked about equipment, settings, and lighting, and learned how to adjust for objects that make easy photogrammetry candidates. In this video, we'll look at how to deal with reflective objects and the issues they cause, and how to use light polarization to solve this. When light hits a surface, it's usually reflected in a diffused way, bouncing uniformly, giving the surface its color appearance. But depending on the surface roughness, some light can be reflected straight towards your eye or camera. This specular reflection changes depending on your viewing angle. Photogrammetry works by aligning visual patterns and elements between photographs. It assumes the look of an object won't change between each consecutive photograph. So specular reflection is an unwanted effect here. A mild case might just have a reflective coating, but objects that are metal can be much trickier and take more effort to solve. We'll tackle the mild case in this video. We just have to capture a perfect base color, unspoiled by specular highlights. It's easy to add the reflectivity back in 3D once captured anyway. So to solve this, we can filter our specular reflections using a method called cross-polarization. When light is polarized, all the waves are oriented in the same direction. If you then polarize it again, in a perpendicular direction, it gets completely blocked, rendering it invisible. Polarizing mostly affects specular light, as these are focused light rays, traveling in a specific direction as opposed to the scattered diffuse light that we want to keep. You polarize light with a polarizing filter, a special transparent sheet that filters the light waves. They come in many forms. We'll use a screw-on glass filter for our lenses, as well as DIY-style polarizing film sheets. The basic idea is to add a filter to your light and your lens and set them up to be perpendicular to each other. That means you'll need to fine-tune filter orientation by rotating them. Once they're set up, specular reflections from that light become invisible. It's quite special to see. Twisting your filters can suddenly completely eliminate all glare from a polarized light. A polarizing filter for your lens should be bought, as you want optimal optics, still allowing for clear, sharp photos. Different lenses have different sizes thread to screw filters onto, so make sure to get the right one for your lens of choice, or a few sizes for multiple lenses if you're experimenting. Polarizing your lights is cheaper and simpler. Film sheets are relatively inexpensive. You can use an entire sheet or cut pieces out. It's a good idea to cut circular pieces covering the entire light, as it makes it easier to rotate them. Some lights are better for this. They might have a little filter holder or magnets to hold sheets in place. If not, sticky tape always works. Make sure to add the polarizer after any diffusers, as diffusing the light cancels any polarization. Remember the ring flash we talked about in the last video? Most cheaper ones screw into your filter slot and might not let you attach a lens filter anymore. They also don't have any way to attach polarizing filters to the flashlight itself, so you'll have to make your own. Only top-of-the-line models support this properly. Rotating and matching polarizers across your setup needs to be done constantly. Your lens filter needs to be fully perpendicular to all your lights. And the only way to do this is to look at your camera display and adjust things. I like to start by taping a single sheet to my flash and then adjust my lens filter to block the flash's reflections. You can only do this by taking a picture or by dry firing the flash. It's a bit involved, so I like to mark the correct orientation on my lens filter with a marker once I've found it, and then try not to touch the lens and flash filter anymore. Adjusting the polarization on your video lights is different but easier. You'll have to constantly tweak your lights as you move them, or when you adjust the camera height. Simply rotate the sheet until it looks right on your camera display again. Every single light source that shows up in reflections needs to be polarized so you might have to close windows or turn screens off. When properly set up, you should be able to capture an object as if it's completely matte, with no reflections and even lighting. Just like seeing your mesh with only the base color texture applied, it lets you capture difficult, reflective objects. Metal objects require a different approach, which we'll cover in another video.